In the last two weeks, cases of kidnapping assumed a dangerous and frightening dimension. Now, kidnapping is not new in Nigeria, but since 2014, when schools of secondary school girls were abducted from a secondary school in Chibok, Borno State, by the Boko Haram Islamic sect, the country has not experienced mass kidnap. But on March the 3rd this year, Nigerians woke up to the news of the kidnap of 112 internally displaced persons from their camp in Gambaru Ngala in Borno State. Well, just as Nigerians were still discussing their development and wondering whether the country is relapsing into the period of 2014, the Roughnecks last week, March 7, struck again in Kaduna State, where they abducted 287 children from a primary and about 187 from a secondary school. However, just as the dust was about, the incident was about to settle, Kajuru Village, also in Kaduna, was invaded on March 11 and schools kidnapped. Earlier before the Kajuru incident, about 15 students were equally kidnapped in Sokoto State. The kidnappers of the 287 children initially asked for 40 trillion naira. Some motorcycles and cars as ransom before the children could be released. But on Thursday, March 15, they reduced it to 1 billion naira. They have also given the government 15 days to make the 1 billion naira available or they would kill all the children. Security analyst Okichuku Wangoba joins us now to discuss these and maybe proper solutions that the government seems to be oblivious to. Good evening to you, Okichuku. Many thanks for joining us on the news now. Good evening, Justin. How are you? Good to see you. Yeah, good to see you once again. Uh, good to hear from you this evening. Uh, let's just try and dive into the security issues and see what we can do to proffer solutions because Nigerians have just have been kidnapped and they cannot even sleep with both eyes closed as it were. Well, it seems as though kidnapping has become a thriving business with powerful and influential Nigerians behind the trade. Do you feel the same way? I think that um, the kidnapping has, actually, as far back as 2020, you know, re reports already indicated that kidnapping has, you know, remained the biggest business in Nigeria, the biggest business and the greatest threat to security in Nigeria. And as far as I'm concerned, at the rate that we're going, you know, it puts a question to the legitimacy of government. Because it is only in, in a country that has no government that this, this kind of things can be happening. You know, hundreds of people kidnapped, and it is not something that happens in, in an hour. It takes time. So between the time people are kidnapped and they're taken through the pathways to where they are kept, no security agency intervention, no government intervention, and it keeps happening every now and then. So this is no longer something to, you know, I mean, it's no longer a joke. And I think that... Um, Government needs to show political will, indeed, because a lot of resources have been put into security, you know, for, uh, for security funding, equipment, and training and all that. Yet, these things keep happening. So it is not difficult to reach a conclusion that there are people, powerful people, who are behind this syndicate who don't want it to happen. And if the government really wants to stop this, the technology has been put in place, Otherwise, why would Nigerians be made to go through the hassle of, you know, registering with NIN and all that, all this technology, and yet people make phone calls, demand ransom, and get paid ransom, and nobody is arrested? No, no, this is not, this, this can happen in, in, in a, a normal situation. Okay, now, some Nigerians are alleging that those behind the organized crime could be within the, uh, could be state actors, as it were, especially as the government seems to be chasing its own tail in looking for solutions. How do you reason all of that? I remember that as far back as, the, as it, in 20, 2014, during the time of uh, President Jonah, we, 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 kept, we started hearing about, you know, people in government and people within security agencies being part of the syndicate. During the time of President uh, Buhari, we also had government uh, spokesperson, you know, say that from time to time that they know those who are behind, uh, you know, kidnapping and insecurity, you know. Um, and, but what we never saw was government taking concrete action to deal with this, to identify them, to isolate them, 
and, and prosecute them. So we keep hearing. So government themselves con keep confirming that they know those behind the scenes. But what we have failed to see is action. So there is, it is not in doubt. It's no longer speculative anyway, anymore to say that government knows those who are involved in all this criminality. But what we don't understand is why they are doing nothing about that. Why nobody is arrested. Why people are kidnapped. about the recent incident now the bandits are demanding ransom right now they are actually giving an ultimatum uh, asking the government to uh, uh, asking for a ransom payment of about one billion naira but the president Bala Tilibu has said emphatically that government would not pay a dime to get the victims back do you agree with his stance on this I, what happened in Delta State is quite unfortunate, quite condemnable. It, it is not right for you know people to um, unleash that level of attack on on on, on military personnel. The, you, usually, what this happens, what, what happens when this when this type of thing happens is that the military have a tendency to go on a reprisal, and in, in that reprisal. It is not just the perpetrators that are, I mean, in many cases, those who committed the crime would have left the scene. So those who bear the brunt are the ordinary citizens. It's unfortunate I commiserate with the families of the military officers, I commiserate with the military, but I urge restraint on the part of the military so that they don't, um, you know, um, use indiscriminate and, uh, you know, uh, needless force to, to to deal with this situation. What is needed is some level of intelligence to identify the actual perpetrators and make sure that they are brought to account. Opinion now, what can really be done in as much as uh, the president um, has come out to say that uh, those who are found culpable would actually face uh, the music and be, um, uh, they will actually face the full wrath of the Lord now, but in the short run, because residents are fleeing, how can normalcy, what can be done for normalcy to be returned in the shortest time to that, uh, those communities? Yeah, I think what is necessary to be done at this stage is for a, a lot of intelligence needs needs to be deployed. You know, there are leaders in those communities. You know, there there, there are not. If, I'm not sure that every. I'm sure that not every member of the community is involved in this in this. You know, cr criminality. There is also a possibility that, that some people in the community would have some clue about those actually involved. So, is to engage with the leaders of the community and with the security authorities within the with the state with a view to identifying the those actually responsible and not to criminalize every member of the community but also to look at the look at ways of addressing the cause of this you know um communal dispute that has led to this needless killing of uh, our 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 soldiers all right, thank you so much. Okay, Chukun Wangoma is Executive Director, Rule of Law and Accountability Center. Rulak, thanks for all of um, the useful insights that you have shared with us on the news now tonight. Thank you. It's my pleasure. Hello. Hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.